Questions uh, about law? Lawfulness? Yeah. Did did you do something unlawful? Do you not know? <laughs> they, might. Uh, they can certainly help you and direct you in the uh, right direction. That's not right. Okay. No, that was um, great. That was great. Come on. And uh, you can also tell them thanks for buying the booze. Yeah. Um, and right out of the gate, uh, you know, typically I don't do the monologue, but I actually have something because it's April, and I thought I'd tell you all about the greatest April Fool's prank that was ever pulled on me by my mother. Um, we had an ongoing, ever since probably like middle school, the classic rubber band on the sink uh, sprayer. Getcha. That, that was one of mine. And then uh, Kool-Aid in the shower head. Ooh. Have you ever done that one? Ooh. Good one. Kiddos, keep that up your sleeve. Um, and it kind of escalated and grew. And then my junior year of high school, I, uh, I got really sick. I got mono. Um, but uh, so we went to the doctor. And they did like the normal doctor stuff. And then he left the room and he came back. And he was like, uh, have, you, have you had this happening or this happening? Like only secret stuff I would tell my mama. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And they're like, OK. And then he brought in another doctor oh, and second a nurse. Opinion. Oh. And they were like, do you have this and this and this? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> they left the room, came back with another doctor oh, and no. three nurses, asked me a few more questions, took blood. That's Asked dedication. For a stool sample? Sure. A urine sample? If you got it. And uh, I was at the point of panic, uh, kind of freaking out because there was you're like, 12 what? people in this tiny and you're like little 16 years old doctor's or something. office, and all I had was yeah. a fever. I was 16, yeah. yeah and I was like, what's happening? What is happening? And, and they were like, Ryan, we think you're growing breasts. <laughs> and I was like, what? And my mom was like, April Fool's! Gotcha. What is your problem? Oh my God. And we're, we're what, about 15 of the 20 in, years in of the 20 year plan for right. you to get her back? Oh, oh no, I got her back the next year and oh, then good. we called it a truce. Okay, all right, ceasefire. I might have went a little too far myself. See, That'll that, be for a story for next year. It's next though. April. That's next year. <laughs> Uh, but another great storyteller, like myself, uh, is our first guest, Simeon Mills. Simeon, come on up, buddy. Simeon Mills. Hey, welcome. Right now. Oh. Ryan made me do this. <laughs> Ryan enforces the theme song rule pretty Pretty thoroughly. It's just had you. written it's pretty in his own original theme song, and then I was singing in the back, and it was like, Simi and Mills. Ooh. I was like, Can you make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> sure course. enough, of course. Justin the Wizard. Uh, Simeon, welcome. Thank you. How's it going? It's great. Great to be here. You wrote a book. 
Yeah. 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 Woo! <laughs> it's called The Obsoletes. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a little, I mean, it, this, is a, this is a long time coming. Yeah, I uh, started this in the year 2000, so uh, <laughs> only 19 years. It's I mean, gonna I be good. <laughs> one or two more okay. if, at that pace, but um, it's a story about uh, two uh, teenage brothers, and they have a secret, and the secret is that they're robots, and they have to hide their identities um, or else the small 1991 Michigan town that they live in will destroy them. Uh, That's amazing. Because they, they don't like robots. Right. <laughs> you um, you see the Uncanny Valley. I mean, it just makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, but, but it's, uh, they look very realistic. Oh, like, so they're, they're they out of the be, valley now. They're yeah, just they're totally. Out of, it's, it takes place in 1991, but the, the robot technology is perfect. Yeah. They're still using VCRs. Okay. But, <laughs> uh, like, they just kind of snicker about it and they're like, you <laughs> idiots. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's mostly about the relationship between these two brothers, um, and they mostly have to go through life on their own because their parent models have become obsolete and disappeared, um, as happens to parent robots. Uh, and uh, so they're, they're just regular teenagers. They're a lot like um, myself when I was a teenager. Right. And, do they, have, do uh, they have human guardians or anything? Or are they kind of doing a boxcar well, kids the, type thing? Or just? They were created by a company in Detroit okay. called Gravy Robotics. Uh, they don't know much about it because they, you know, have been just sort of planted in this town. Is that a Robocop reference, Detroit? Is that a, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I... I didn't, didn't, I didn't do it. I, blew it yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, you know. Way to dodge the, uh, <laughs> the copyright infringement. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know. When you said it was about two brothers who were robots, I heard somebody go, yes! <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think you got One a hit on your head. <laughs> yeah, guaranteed. Uh, and you recently did uh, Comic-Con. You did an Emerald City Comic-Con? Yeah. yeah, that, right. was, uh, that yeah. was a blast. I mean, just... That was your first, yeah? Yeah, my first of, you know, that style of con, just like, you know, the cosplayers coming at me. I just kind of wanted to sort of be a fan. I just kind of was a fan there. I mean, nobody was there to see me, really, because right. it's like my first <laughs> book. But, um, uh, so, but cool. so it was just, yeah, really cool to, to go there and be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, your day job, middle school teacher. Right. Uh, right. You yeah. probably got a lot of good feet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, Probably got a lot of good feedback in, in writing this book over yeah, 18 I mean, years of middle school students. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been a, a middle school teacher that long, but as I was, you know, definitely editing it and going through drafts, like, just being around middle school kids all day, like, helped me get into the voice, get into, like, the... And that's, uh, that's a brutal audience, I'd imagine. Emotional. Yeah. You know, I, I have shared parts of it with them. They're, like, they're pretty excited about yeah? it. So oh, they're, cool. like... You know, intrigued by the premise, um, I think it definitely could be a YA book. I'm, I can't think of any reason it wouldn't be, uh, but it's it's not necessarily being marketed that way. It's like a, a science fiction, sure. uh, just sort of like a I, I, general not to science fiction. I got an advanced copy. I'm a couple chapters deep. It could definitely be a YA <laughs> book, but it's yeah. still a sci-fi, like yeah. just fun story. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and this actually isn't really your first book. Uh, you've mm -hmm. written a graphic novel called yeah. Butcher Paper. Yeah. Uh, Sean, do you want to put down the screen? Yeah. Stuff. Uh, and when did, when did that, when did you do that? Well, that, um, that came out maybe uh, three or four years ago. Yeah. And that one took only about eight years to oh, make. Oh, wow. But, like, the, the thing about when you write like a graphic novel, it does, it takes a long time to draw all the pictures and to get everything, and then people read it like a half an hour. Right. That's, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and they're like, you know, give me another one. one. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't, when's I'm the only on year three out? here. But like, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it takes a uh, But there's a process for that because you actually draw it and write yes. it. Like where a lot of yes. graphic novels or comics are, there's a writer, there's an artist, there's an mm -hmm. inker, there's a, you know, a yeah. bunch of things. But you oh, one of my favorites, Paul Pope. He's art, oh, artist yeah, and Paul writer. Pope. And yeah. yeah. No, I've always, that's yeah, mad respect for that, yeah. that yeah. dual wielding. <laughs> And it's, it's super cool and fun. And what's what's that about? It's a it's a teacher, yeah. Uh, the butcher paper. Yeah. It's kind of uh, it's kind of like a father and son. They're 
uh, the father's trying to get his son to read to improve his uh, reading scores at school, so he buys a bunch of um, horror uh, short stories that they, you know, they read them together. Oh, um, cool. And they get increasingly inappropriate for a young kid <laughs> to be reading. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, that one is not a YA title, but <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it's uh, like... It's super fun though. It's, yeah, it's got some uh, horror elements, like um, I had a, a friend that helped me edit a lot of my comics and he was like, you know, you're drawing comics, you really can't draw anything. You don't have to just like be very realistic. And I think um, I really just kind of took that to heart. So there's like giant spiders in it, there are, um, pet worms that grow to be the size of pythons and oh, dogs with human heads and yeah, it's great. Uh, so yeah, that was that was pretty fun. And I don't know, Sean, are we not being able to get the uh, get some? Oh, okay. So you just occasionally we'll take a picture of yourself. Yeah. Uh, so it's part of my process to. Um, I'm, I'll model for a lot of the uh, scenes, whether it's just like a head or an entire pose that I want, and then. I'll take a sharp, I'll, I'll print it out, like real low quality on my printer, and I'll trace the character I want over the top of it. Um, and then when I flip it over, just the sharpie lines are left. And then I kind of have this character after the, after the pose has been yeah. done. It's kind of a, it's a good, good it's transition. kind of a long, I mean, you could probably do it digitally a little bit better. Uh, uh, but, <laughs> so that's why they're kind of alternating like that. But, it's um, such a cool, process and we talked a little bit about it like I used to get like Wizard magazine and even like you know Todd McFarlane used to do this when doing like Spider-Man yeah. stuff and doing a lot of that but you get you get pretty pretty deep in it though because I think I think we have one that's uh, yeah <laughs> you you find yourself in some interesting situations uh, and it's it's just it, at a certain point you're just you're kind of acting. You got to get into the yeah. uh, the part yeah. that you're gonna play, uh, whatever it is. Um, yeah. So bless your heart for sharing that with everybody. <laughs> happy to do it. <laughs> uh, so the obsolete comes out next month, May. Yeah. Uh, it comes out May fourteenth. Uh, um, there's going to be a book launch at Auntie's on May 22nd, yeah. um, Wednesday. The, great uh, to come out there. Uh, my friend Rob Schlegel is going to be reading from his new book of poems as well. Um, great. So that's coming up next. Uh, Sharma Shields, your wife, mm -hmm. wrote a book that came out last month, The Cassandra. That's right. Was yeah. that a real burn to you? Was she was just like, I gotta get in there before? Well, it was kind of tough because she, yeah, her book came out a little before mine and she sold it for publication. This happened like a year ago, like right, like a couple months before mine sold and I was just like, oh my God, it's her second one. Like it's, <laughs> oh, it's so easy, but uh, really it's, it's been incredible having Sharma as, you know, to, to just tell me about all this stuff, like, oh, you got your first crappy review. Yeah, yeah, I know how that goes. Like, yeah, uh, um, to just, like, it's not the end of the world, to, and just to understand, like, she understands what that feels like. She also understands, like, the real elation kind of moments, too, and it's just... It's true, it's, it's really cool to rare to have a partner that's, like, you know, yeah, doing the same things you do and yeah. can yeah. understand. It's yeah, really so. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, so the book comes out next month, uh, and uh, please go check it out. Oh, also, you're doing Get Lit, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, Get Lit is next week. Everyone should, you know, find some events to go to. I'm definitely yeah. going to go as, like, a fan for sure uh, to see Tommy Orange, Roxane Gay, um, uh, some big headliners. Um, I'm going to be doing a panel on Friday morning at SFCC. Um, called New, uh, or Fiction Writers Breaking Ground. And then uh, the next day, Sharma is going to moderate a panel um, about some of our- Beat you to it, Sharma. <laughs> <laughs> our friends in Missoula, uh, it was just kind of like, we all met in grad school. I met Sharma in grad school. We, neither of us had published anything, short story or anything, but we, we've all really stuck with it. And um, this was like, you know, like 17 years ago. And um, we've found some success in a lot of different pathways. So we're going to talk about that on Saturday. 
That's great. Yeah. Simeon, uh, the book is The Obsoletes, comes out next month, and Butcher Paper is out. Uh, you can find that anywhere. And, and uh, Simeon, thanks so much for coming on, man. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So right. thanks. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. All right. Um, our next guest is, uh, we're not bringing it up quite yet, uh, Mark, but uh, our next bit is inspired by our next guest. Uh, it's a- uh, Or a lack of understanding of our next You know, we guest. tried our best for comedy writers, uh, when even that's pretty rough. Yeah, and, uh, that's arguable. <laughs> in the loosest sense. Uh, but we tried our hand at poetry. Um, and so we made a video of, uh, of our writers and our, our staff here that put on the show. Uh, and one of our new, new writers, Annika Eagle, joined us. And uh, yeah, big hand for Annika, who she also puts on Punderground here at the library every month now. So uh, look that up. And uh, yeah, here's us trying out, trying out poetry. I'm blue, da ba di da ba da, da ba di da, da ba di da ba da, da ba di da. I'm blue, da ba di, da ba da. Check with the sun. Carry a compass to help you along. Your feet are going to be on the ground. Your head is there to move you around. So stand in the place where you live. Now face north, think about direction. Wonder why you haven't before. Everybody clap your hands, clap. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Now, we're gonna do the basic step. To the left, take it back now. Y'all, one hop. This time, right foot, let's stomp. Left foot, let's stomp. Cha-cha, real smooth. Turn. I was working in the lab late one night. When my eyes beheld an eerie sight, for my monster from his slab began to rise. And suddenly, to my surprise, did the match. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly, sugar, baby. Such a sexy, sexy, pretty little thing. Fierce, nipple pierce. You got me sprung with your tongue ring. And I ain't gonna lie, cause your loving gets me high. So to keep you by my side, there's nothing that I won't try. Butterflies in her eyes and looks to kill. Time is passing. I'm asking, could this be real? Come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly. Sugar. Try <laughs> and don't laugh. It's not funny. <laughs> Totally ignorant. You know, we tried. We're incredibly we're ignorant people. You know, all original work. Um, <laughs> but maybe our next guest can actually teach us a thing or two. Uh, Mark us. Anderson, the poet laureate of Spokane. Come on up, Mark. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Sit. Yeah, yeah, sit. yeah. All right, I'll sit. I like to wait. I'm a gentleman. Um, <laughs> snaps. Yeah, because that's still relevant to, to Does that poetry. Does that still work? Does that happen? Super relevant. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
still happens, right? Or all yeah, the... people still snap. So. Cool, yeah. cool. I, I Some snaps it. for Mark? Yeah. Yay. Dig it. <laughs> Yay, dig it. <laughs> cool cats. What is the poet laureate? <laughs> um, so I get, like, I get that question all the time, and I'm never good at answering it. Uh. Um, <laughs> it's basically a poet who, um, and there's like all different like levels and kinds of poet laureates. There's a bunch of city poet laureates. There's a state, a national poet laureates and stuff. It's basically a way of sort of like picking someone to kind of like honor on behalf of the city as sort of like a poet um, ambassador to people. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. That's what we are. Some right? people have a way with words, some people not have way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, now you 2016? Um, 2017 to 2019. So, so this, is your, last, this yeah, is your last this is your last year. My last, my last year. Making it count? Uh, you got counting it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, do you have plans for the rest of the year? Do you have like, I mean, obviously there's been like events that you've done and there's, it's a big part of, uh, you know, bringing poetry to the community and stuff has been your, your drive for being the yeah. poet. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so being on my second year, so the first year is kind of when you get your footing and you figure out that you can't do half all the things that you want to do. Yeah. And um, second year is you, you get to do the half of the things that you want to do that you get to do. Yeah. Um, so I've been putting on a lot of uh, lit crawls, which are kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a bar crawl, but with uh, poetry and fiction and nonfiction readers interspersed at each of the stops. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of fun. And I have a, I've been putting on this, uh, program, I guess you would call it, with Spokane Arts and um, the City Council, where we have a poet come and read and start off every City Council meeting. And oh, that's, that's called cool. Poets of the Podium. That's rad. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, well, great. Um, also, I, w I went and talked to you last week. Was it last week or the week before? Uh, I think it was last week. Uh, just to talk about coming on the show. And you, were, you had to leave to go judge a high school poetry slam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How was that? It was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, so the Spokane County Library District it, uh, puts on these high school poetry slams. There's one that's up north um, called Northern Slam between Deer Park and Riverside. And then there's one in the valley um, with uh, like Central Valley and other valley schools. And then the winners of both of those came together in the first ever like championship match between oh. them. Um, and that's uh, what I was going to go judge. And it was really great and um, inspiring. A little, a little intimidating being like, oh, wow, like you're already doing this and I know so much more than you, but like, the, like <laughs> am I getting anything out of knowing that? <laughs> like, like I keep learning yeah. more, but am I getting better? Right. <laughs> uh, and what's been the highlight for you as, as you run? Um, so, gosh, I mean, there's so many, like, I've gotten to go and meet so many different people doing cool poetry and literary things um, in our region. That's been really great. I got to write a poem um, for the reopening of the Louvre Carousel. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's this time capsule uh, beneath the building, and the poem is uh, in that time capsule. So in um, 25 or 30 years, uh, someone will unearth it. And Man, that's crazy. That's my poem so cool. about the carousel. Wow, yeah. so that's, that's fantastic, exciting. yeah. You're an official that's part great. of Spokane history. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's huge, man. Congratulations. That's really great. Uh, and I thought maybe you'd want to read a poem for us. Yeah, um, oh. I've never told which mic to use. Well, I'm going to bring you this one right here. All right, cool. Good. Does this work? Yeah. All right, cool. That Should works. Okay. What's, what's I'm used to standing and performing. Yeah, um, I'm going to sit over here. Cool. I don't want to be weird. Um, so this poem, I, uh... Is it for us? <laughs> for... For being cute? Um, sure. <laughs> uh, um, this poem, uh, last year I went to the Rockford Fair, or, um, it's called the Southeast Spokane County kind of Fair now, but, um, uh, back when I was growing up and I lived out, um, just, like, out in the Freeman area, um, it was called the Rockford Fair, and that was kind of like our fair, for um, like the kids who grew up out there. Um, we just kind of like ran, run free out there. Um, 
So I went there after having, of course, not like really been back for 20 years or something. And I had this experience um, on this ride called the yo-yo, where it just like picks you up and spins you around, um, of just like feeling kind of like my past and present colliding. Um, so I tried to write a poem about that. And this is called Yo-Yo Scarecrow Rockford Fair Ergo Sum. <laughs> I am the yo-yo. I am in the yo-yo. A carnival's whirl at the Rockford Fair. Hard to tell where I end in the spinning where the wind begins, in my ears, in the stories drifting up from neon lights, the giggle behind me wrapped in an autumn scarf. I spent my last dollars on bingo here decades ago, dreaming up questions of who will love me, how soon, why not yet, and if I could go back with the wind, would I tell him not to worry, here in the hay wafting up, the braying animals in their barn, or would I remain silent? Why spoil the surprise? 30 years old now and hardly growing rampant, oh little lovely weed trying to prove himself a flower. I noticed the gray trailers hidden behind the rides, haphazard homes, knowing this is daily life, permits and pieces of paper pushed across desks, overnight kingdom of mystery, only real people working. This life not always what we make of it, not only what it makes of us. I ask we may smile on the Auburn fall day we are brought to harvest. I dreamed for so long of having someone by my side, bringing them here, saying, this is where I ran free, looking out from the height of the Ferris wheel, silly scarecrow at the top of the world. What's he got to prove? Scarecrow racing the dizzy highway at 90 miles per hour. Say it's all a field of wheat somehow, huh? Only with gelled back hair. Say, I have a house of mirrors with your name on it. See your face in every face, your long hollow eyes lost in faraway constellations on the good nights, back against the cool grass, finding nowhere's middle as a blackbird glints across the fresh-faced moon and the wind gives back my secrets, chickens and rabbits waiting in their cages, ribbons that don't mean a thing for them, the chill setting in. I want to feel it all in the center of this whirling moment. I am buying a magic trick, picturing myself with a cape. I am painting a face onto a zucchini, his eyes peering out in a smile. Where is my blue ribbon? He is shriveling up. He is barely a memory. I am saying, I won this prize for you. Will you take it? Will you remember me when I am gone? Little scarecrow, here is a wall of balloons and the fine dart blade of longing. The whir, pop. Clamor and bang, here is a brain. Think me up a good question. Think me up a good song. You've won it all. Congratulations, congratulations. A plush rabbit filled with sawdust who can only say, I love. I am love. I am love, therefore, I am. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Wow. Uh, that didn't even rhyme. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about the form. I don't get it. That was beautiful. That yeah, was really that was great. On, that um, was on point. Oh, can you do the screen again? We have a, we have oh, a, sure. We have a really cool thing uh, that our, our buddy Darian Mack made. Um, it'll be airing on Community Minded Television, Channel 14. Uh, we'll, we'll switch, we'll do it. Um, uh, 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 side lights. <laughs> he can't respond because he's at work right now. He's working. <laughs> See? Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's a new show. It's called Jim and Jim. And I'm just going to let you see it. It's really great. Hi, everybody. My name is Jim. My name is Jim, too. Welcome to the show. Uh, Jim, what are we going to be doing today? We have a project, and we're going to check it out. All right, let's look. Okay, so, Jim, you have a, you have a bike that you just got, right? It's old and rusty and not pretty. Right. So, so what did we decide? What are we going to do? We're going to use this color first, and this one we're going to use on top. So Jim, uh, where did we get this bike? 
Our neighbor Jim brought it over. Where did he find it? He found it by a tree. By a tree, okay. Jim, are you pretty pumped to have a bike that is that color? Yeah. What's your favorite color? Sea glass or teal. Yeah, color of teal. Teal is like your thing. How many teal paint samples did you collect today? A thousand. So Jim, what are you doing currently? Riding my bike. Now this is your old bike, right? Yeah. Is it a little bit small now? Yeah. So, which is why we're gonna work on the new one, right? Yeah. <coughs> so we're in the process of taking the new old bike apart so that it can be primed and painted. Got one rusty bolt that's given us some trouble. We're gonna try some of this coconut pants, spray. don't spray your face. Uh, and get it right on there. Um, whoops. Where, right here? Well, Jim, we're a few days in on this project. What are we going to do today? <coughs> Where? Come on. Get that. All right, now the bike has been kind of taped up. Uh, we sanded a little bit down. Got the, the wheels and everything off. Are we ready to try painting it? Yeah. So are we going to prime the bike today? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. So, Jim, the bike is primed. Got a good coat of primer on there. We're gonna let it dry. For until 2.30. Yes, until 2.30. What can we do until 2.30? I have no idea. Well, we could look at these paint samples. We're gonna look at paint samples until 2.30? Yeah. Do you know what time it was when we were? One o'clock. Yeah, so you wanted to look at paint samples for like two hours. The primer is dry. Yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So what's next? We have to paint the teal. That's right, we're gonna get the teal Just coat the on there. Gonna make it look real nice, right? Okay, you ready? Ready. Good. I'm going to right there now. Okay. In the middle, kind of. Good, good. So, Jim, what are we about to see right now? My new bike. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Can you count down? Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. There it is. All right, Jim, so this is the old chain, right? Yeah, we're going to get a new one. Yeah, this one was really rusty. Not great. Not helpful at all. And then our old tires here. You ready to go get it fixed up? Yep. And look. Woo. <laughs> Let's see, we took the bike down to where? Quarter bikes. There was a Hello Kitty bike that I thought Jim Matt would like, mm -hmm. and then there was like almost teal bike. It's like part light blue, part teal. But not as teal as, as the one that we painted, right? Yes. Correct. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to put on a chain over here, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put on uh, some tubes and uh, tires on those guys. going to snap this on, make sure the brakes work, and uh, I'm going to test it out afterwards. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, Jim, look at this thing. You need to just pop Me it. How's it. Look at Is it feeling pretty good? Yes, this is still sticky. It won't be. Don't worry, Jim. It is still sticky. <laughs> Yes, Jim's on his next attempt. No. Do it again. Okay, Jim, get it up and uh, yes. Take, take three. Uh oh, see you later, Jim. Was it a little bit challenging to get up on a bigger bike? Yeah, I got better, got used to it. Yeah, took a little bit of practice though, right? Yeah. Some determination. This is the funnest bike ever! Yes, Jim has done it, ladies and gentlemen. I believe he's broken the sound barrier for speed on his new teal bike. Well, I've been Jim. I've been Jim too. Have a good day, have a good day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh man, that was adorable. That yep. was fantastic. Yep. Uh, that'll be on CMTV, and hopefully we'll see some more, some more maybe down the, coming down the line. Also, uh, their Instagram, uh, the Jim and Jim Show. The Jim and Jim Show on Instagram, so check that out uh, to keep updated on those projects. And um, 
Right now, I wanted to bring up Annette from FinFest to just talk about FinFest to you all uh, real quick. So Annette, here. Hello. All right. So they gave me like a couple minutes. They didn't say like one minute or three minutes. But I, I'm going to cut you off. You're on yeah, time. Yeah, you, you cut just, me off. Just you just <laughs> tell me that. Because I wanted to come up here and I have a confession to make in front of you and the beautiful people of Spokane. Yeah. I need you to know that I am a feminist. Yeah. And it's been weighing really heavily on me, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, I realize sometimes I forget to shave my armpits. Yeah. You me know? too. Then I remember and then I do it, but you know, that must mean I'm a feminist, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes I go to this monthly brunch with the Shrinking Violets and we talk about, you know, community organizing uh -huh. and making the city a better place and buying from local businesses. So I think that makes me a feminist, right? Yeah. Okay. And so I went to, I'm a Whitworth alumni. I don't know if that specifically makes me a feminist. Sure. And I got an art degree. Maybe that's not particularly feminist. I think so. But now I'm running an art festival called FemFest, Spokane Feminist Art Festival. Yeah. So that probably makes me a feminist. A little bit. A little bit, all right. Yeah. And it's gonna be on this stage. Yeah. In, uh, in two Saturdays on the 27th. And I think that all of you should come. Even if you don't call yourself a feminist, you should just come and check it out and see what local feminists paint and what poetry they write, what music they're making, uh, just to see, check it out. You know, dip your toe in the feminist art scene and see what happens. Maybe it'll suit you. It's yeah. gonna be super fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and thanks for putting it on. Thank you. And thanks, this is Annette, come to Fitbit. Even if you don't want to come for like the whole art part, just come and see Itchy Kitty because that's going to be. Oh, okay, so cool. they're the best. Yeah, yeah, great. And that, thanks so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Put this on. A mama doll. Do y'all want to come on up? <laughs> We're going to have mama doll play some. I'm like, uh, oh, two microphones. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mama Doll's gonna come up. Ah, they're really great. Did they, who, who, any fans? Yeah. I thought so. I thought so. Anyone who wasn't clapping will be clapping after tonight. Oh, thank you, yeah. Uh, bar closes at nine. You can enjoy tunes from all the way back at the bar. So, feel free. Did I bring this one over here? Or was it? This one's yours. And that one's Justin's. Uh, I think so. Oh, 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 sorry. Yoink. There we go. Justin, a uh, former cast member, former uh, band leader. One half of Hindus. One half of Hindus, yeah. <laughs> Two Justins in a band, they had to come up with something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are you guys gonna play for us? <clears throat> We're gonna play a song for you. Oh, good. Yeah, we thought we would go ahead and do go that route. That's good. Good plan. <laughs> um, it doesn't have a name, so if it speaks to you, it's about going on bad dates. Oh, so could we maybe like you can play it, and then we'll see if somebody will name <laughs> it. Can, yeah. You okay. Can shout out whatever <laughs> comes to you. <laughs> Okay. Untitled Mama Doll track. Yeah, it's really edgy. <laughs>
Wowza, Mama Doll. Fantastic. So good. Thanks, gang. Yeah. That was fantastic. Any ideas for the name of the song? No time to worry. No time Whoa. to worry. About you. About you. In parentheses. <laughs> In parentheses is the rest of the lyrics. It's, <laughs> it's a strong title. It's yeah. a strong title. <laughs> it's a bold move. Uh, real quick, you know, the library bond passed, and there's going to be some major changes to this library. It's going to be even cooler, even more amazing. We're going to have David Schnee come up uh, and talk about a little bit about what's going to be. There he is. Hey, how are you? Hey. Oh, you stole my handshake. <laughs> now, David, I heard that you're a talker, so you're on a timer. <laughs> this is the elevator pitch. Uh, <laughs> no mic. I'll get you a mic. That'll you do help. need a mic. You need a mic. Um, yeah, so we're going to pull up a few uh, designs that uh, you've created, yes? Yeah. Oh, we'll uh, scooch yeah, over yeah, yeah. here. Well, we'll stay right here. Just so we're sure going to give a quickie see. tour of all the great library improvements that are in the works. Okay. We'll get shout outs for you. So how many of you guys are uh, Hilliard Library fans? Come Woo! on, let's hear it. So Hilliard Library is going to be uh, uh, replaced Burn as part of the new Hilliard. middle school across the street, uh, the Shaw Middle School, because you guys all supported both two fabulous bonds for the Spokane Public Schools and Spokane uh, Public Library together. And this is one of the joint use uh, libraries here. So right in the foreground is going to be a new expanded joint use library, totally for the community, but also for the kids' lifelong learning. Next slide. Oh, Woo! man, Kate, man, you're crushing it. Okay, a library unlike anything you've seen anywhere else. On East Sprague, we're going to have uh, this wonderful new thing called the Hive. It's a place that's going to be a uh, multi-purpose event space. It's going to be studios where people can do AMP type activities. AMP is a new acronym for Arts, Makers, and Partner Spaces. We're going to have artists and residents uh, here in the library in those yellow spaces. As people drive by, you're going to want to see what's at the, all the buzz at the Hive. Really fun, fun place. A joint use project for the school. Woo. Okay, the East Side Library is moving to the New Liberty Park. So how many East Side Library fans here? Yeah, Woo! there we go. Woo! So Look at a that. beautiful it's new library with lots grand. of transparency. It's right into Liberty Park, right opposite the pool, sharing the parking lot, opening up onto the, uh, all their other park resources to the bluff and the trails. There's going to be a tremendous resource. People can uh, bike and walk here from the neighborhood, and people from all the south side can also uh, come down the hill and enjoy the new library that's going to be here, this early rendering of it. So let's give a Video. shout out for Liberty Park. Okay, Shadel, how many uh, Northside Shadel fans here? Okay, this is your largest library, a big library. It's going to be uh, nearly double the size. So we're going to, right now, it has sort of uh, not very much uh, presence on Wellesley. We're going to expand it with a children's room popping out uh, right uh, to the north. And as we get to the next slide, uh, we're going to have a brand new entry, uh, which is, we're calling it the lens. We're in a community lens here. We're going to have this wonderful uh, entry space. You can see the Shadle uh, uh, landmark water tank behind. The existing entry becomes the book drop. And here you have this new, beautiful, Man, grand reading room right in the that's center. That's crazy. It's going to be awesome <laughs> with learning spaces. And here, last but not least, the downtown library. <laughs> This building's got great bones, it's got great uh, activities. We're going to recapture the whole uh, first floor that's uh, mostly back of house and you can't see it. So we're going to connect all three floors with a brand new stair with these dynamic angles going up to the skylights up on the third floor. We're going to relocate the uh, meeting rooms into event space, new computer lab, all sorts of collaboration spaces, a cafe. Friends of the library are all going to be up front. It's going to be just fabulous. First floor, we're going to go up to the second floor now. Here, so if you're coming in from the Sky Bridge, uh, here you can look down into the wonderful activities down below. We have a new relocated stair up to the third floor here, social stair, so imagine before coming to Lilac City Live, we're gonna enjoy uh, hanging out, having maybe our beers downstairs, we'll sit and gather before we come to enjoy the full yeah. show. Here, more traditional library services here, um, a totally amped up children's space yeah. here, right below us on the second Sounds floor okay. where we are here. And then finally going up I to mean, the third floor, coming up to the top of the There's stair, we're gonna set for 
Lilac City Live at the, Lilac Lilac Live at the uh, Community Lens there. We'll have a place, a more permanent place to get our refreshments. The Northwest Room's coming up and having recording studios and media recording and all sorts of 21st century library spaces. This is what's coming. You guys have been contributing to this with your inspirations and we are psyched to be working to deliver. David Shane, it looks beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. That's great. I, uh, I'm no uh, professional, but I feel like some of those people were added into those photos. Did it, did it did something? I don't know. Bit, yeah. But uh, it'll be a lot fuller with the crazy stuff that, man, that looks crazy, right? Yeah. Like all of them. I'm so excited for that. That's going to be fun. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Entering full screen. Um, so we have partnered with Lilac City Law, and we're Lilac City Live. It just made sense to do something silly. Um, so, sorry, Randy. <laughs> Man. Well, looks like the dumpster killer strikes again. DK, dang it! Looks like we're gonna have to take the trash out in our own hands. <laughs> Damn it. Looks like the scissor bandit strikes again. You talking about the South Hill sinister snipper? That's the one. You better call next to kin. What do I say? Tell him his life's been cut too short. Oh my, oh my. Looks like this killer really channeled his anger. Must be the work of the Cox Cable Coddler. That's the one. Looks like this guy isn't paying for the lifetime plan. That seems rather direct. <laughs> well, well, I'll be doggone. I'll say he's a doggoner. I think we need to take a pause and realize how detrimental this is. All I can say to that is, hot dog, time for lunch. You know, actually, we're going to have to take the Lilac City Law into our own hands. Looks like we got a case of Snoop Doggy Don't. Actually, it looks like Lilac City Law provides exceptional family and estate planning, kids protection plans, oh, trust, wills, social security, VA yeah. disability appeal. I, I don't know if they deal with murder so much. Sounds handy and convenient. Yeah. See you later, Ryan. Take it easy, man. <laughs> the theme to Matlock makes me laugh. Like, it feels good every time. <laughs> hey, we got this great new courtroom procedural. Oh, uh, great. You got a theme song? Is <laughs> Benny Hinn in it? <laughs> Makes me think about murder and the law. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, Lilac like City Law is right back there if you have any uh, law questions. Uh, thanks again to them. Uh, our next guest is, uh, is a comedian and a new writer to the show, Jessica Watson. Come on up, Jessica. Jessica. Yeah. Jessica. Go ahead and take it away. <laughs> A lot of you are my friends from work who were tired of this being awkward where I was like, why don't you ever come to my stuff? <laughs> See you. No. <laughs> so my name is Jessica. Um, I know I don't look divorced, uh, but I am. Uh, <laughs> but I think that I would be like a good like third wife. And I don't mean like you have already been divorced twice. I mean, like, you already have two wives? Like, add me. <laughs> I'm really good at microwaving Hot Pockets. <laughs> um, uh, when I was a kid, my parents were like, I didn't, <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> before the first day of kindergarten, my parents were like, are you excited? And I was like, no, like, I don't um, want to go to school. Um, <laughs> They were like, but you're going to meet other people. And I was like, yeah, like, that's why, like, I mean, I know, like, I don't really like them, you know. 
I was five and I was like, I don't really like people. And my parents would be like, you didn't get good grades. And I'd be like, right. Like, but I don't really feel like it's fair to judge me because I never wanted to go. Like, <laughs> nobody really asked me about it. They're like, why are you skipping school? I'm like, because it's boring. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm really successful now. <laughs> so that'll show you. <laughs> uh, I really like this because it's like, finally we can drink openly at the library. Um, <laughs> but my favorite book is Oedipus because um, I think that the moral is really that if you need something to be done right, you do have to do it yourself. Um, <laughs> Everybody who doesn't get that hasn't read Oedipus. <laughs> Just have to pretend I'm not doing this. Um, so, <laughs> there's a Jesus fish on my car um, because of the guy that I bought it from. Um, and I forget about it sometimes. And one time this guy came up to me and he was like, hey, I like your bumper sticker. And I was like, oh, like I forgot I got a bumper sticker. But like if I got one, it would say something along the lines of like, uh, disregard women of ill repute, acquire currency. Um, and then I realized it was the fish, and I was like, oh, no, I was like, I'm an adult. <laughs> he goes, what church do you go to? And I was like, I... No, I'm just, like, returning, like, Redbox movies. I'm not, like, actually part of this to sorrow. Um, <laughs> he gave me a, a cartoon pamphlet anyway. It wasn't funny. Um, if you guys read those. Uh, <laughs> my best friend came over and she watched um, The Bachelor on my Hulu account and now it thinks I'm an idiot. So I got... <laughs> I actually got sucked into this catfishing show and um, the premise is that it's this guy and you contact him if you feel like you're being catfished. So people will contact him because they're like, I think I'm being catfished. Because like, obviously they are. <laughs> so then they'll send the guy this thing and they're like, she said she works here, but it doesn't exist. And he's like, let me show you how to Google. And his, He does his sob story at the beginning of it, and he's like, I fell in love with Megan, and then I found out that she didn't look like an Abercrombie and Fitch model, you know? And, like, so then other, you know, white dudes contact him, <laughs> and they're like, I'm really scared that I might be in love with someone who's fat, so um, let's go find out where they live. I'm ready. Like, and they're not stupid. They're like, I think I'm getting catfished. I'm calling MTV, you know, like I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So then he comes out and the best part of catfishing is that nobody who goes on the catfishing show regards themselves to be the idiot in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> They're just always like, why did you pretend to be a better looking person? I just, it's so rude. <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> Got sucked in. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Um, so one thing that creeps me out um, about Starbucks is the food. Um, every time I go to Starbucks and spend my own money, I'm always like, why does this place stay in business? Because it's just like $3 coffee that's like the same as I could get for free. Um, <laughs> And then inevitably, like, someone will order a food, and I'm just like, why does it, uh, they'll be like, I want that thing in the case, and then they'll grab it out of the case, which you think is the display food. I always thought it was the display food. Like, I didn't know that someone was like, hey, what do you want to do for brunch? Like, I don't know. It's kind of feeling like, uh, I wanted to pay six dollars for maybe like some poached eggs in a cardboard ramekin <laughs> that were maybe like dusted with an apathetic pinch of cayenne if we could go somewhere that has that that'd be great 
<laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I was at Target the other day, and I'm at, so, right, because obviously, so, um, and I'm there, <laughs> and I run into my friend's boyfriend, he's like, hey, and I'm like, hey, he goes, uh, what are you doing here, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like a 30 year old white lady like I'm supposed to be here like what like, I was like what are you doing here there shouldn't be men here like it's just target okay it fair but like targets just like you I just feel like it's a store for women. Like, Target sells things for men, but not, like, to men. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't, like, you, okay. So, because I don't know a man who, and this has happened to all of us, is like, hey, here's my man cave. It's downstairs. Here's my recliners. I got a fridge. Only beer goes in that. That's for boobs. And then, uh, <laughs> the teammates for boobs. And then, like, but you know what's missing? Just like a six by six inch square on fake wood that has man cave and a Verdana font. <laughs> Foxed it up. Oh, sorry, I'm at the library. Shh. I'm not supposed to. Okay, so um, I live in the ghetto and I didn't for a long time. And uh, one time I was jogging and there's a guy in front of me and he's like just not wearing pants. And. <laughs> It was summer, and, like, the worst part of this was that he was wearing, like, a black sweatshirt and then just, like, nothing <laughs> on the bottom. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to go around. So I jog around him, and I run into some people because I think I'm at the, the edge of the ghetto. I, I'm at the lip, right? Like, so I go, and I'm in the South Hill now, right? <laughs> I'm jogging around and some people go, they go, did you see a naked guy? And I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> they were like, did you call someone? I was like, oh, like I forgot. I forgot that's weird. So, uh, <laughs> so I call and I'm like, hey, I was like, there's a guy, he's not wearing pants. He's like, fr he's like freaking people out, you know, like it's dusk. And they go, is he doing anything lewd? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I told you he's not wearing pants. Like, I don't, I don't know where to go from here. You know, they're like, is he doing anything lewd, though? And I was like, I don't know. Um, I've been calling him butt squatch, though. Like, it's just, it's just freaking people out. I was just telling you, like, more people are going to call if they see him. Like, he's on the trail right now. Because, like, after you live in the ghetto for a while, you're just like, ah, uh, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it <laughs> He'll notice he's not wearing pants. He'll go back home. It's fine. We don't have to worry about him. He'll figure it out. No cause for alarm. <laughs> but on the South Hill, they're like, he's not wearing any pants. I better call someone and give you a little leeway. We give you a little leeway in the ghetto. Um, my parents were like really poor growing up, but uh, one thing I did have was a lot of friends because my parents could afford that. So that was, that was something. I already did catfishing. Um, it's rude to ask people if they're poor, uh, but you can ask them how much gas costs because poor people always know that. <laughs> um, I was at the store the other day and they have a lot more flavors of Top Ramen than they used to. It's like, it used to be just like chicken or beef and now it's like chicken and lime and like other kinds of beef, like flaming Hot Cheetos probably. And uh, I was like, that's a lot of flavors for a food where uh, the main, the only choice is poverty. That's, it just tastes like poverty. Uh, I'm crazy, so I have a hard time sleeping, and I'll just buy anything that says it's going to help you sleep. So the other day, I bought a weighted blanket, and then on the box, it says, like, it's supposed to make you feel secure. Like, it's supposed to make you feel like your parents love you or, like, you're safe. <laughs> but it made me feel trapped. <laughs> And 
and I was afraid to fall asleep in it because I thought once I woke up, my husband would still be there and I'd be like, ah! <laughs> You're still here, I feel trapped. So, um, I, but the difference between the weighted blanket and still being married is that the weighted blanket didn't quit its job 10 times, cheat on me, and then cry when I didn't want to keep it. Um, <laughs> so I went back to Target. <laughs> When I was a kid, I was in my yard, and a lady pulled up in a little white bug, and she was like, hey, little girl, do you want some candy? Because I was, like, really cute. And um, <laughs> people wanted to kidnap me. And, uh, I, so I knew what to do, because my mom had talked to me, and I was like, what kind? <laughs> and she just had Whoppers, so um, I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a true story. <laughs> I just wanted, like, leverage. I wanted to be like, Mom, I'm getting way better offers outside. People are trying to give me peanut butter cups. I ain't got shit. <laughs> so I went to the... <laughs> I went to the dentist the other day and he was like, you need to brush your teeth. And I was like, you need to brush my teeth. <laughs> it's not my job. <laughs> this is my last joke. Except for the rest of my life. So, um... <laughs> So my neighbor um, asked me to do stuff all the time, and um, <laughs> I have to pretend like I don't eat food, you know? He'll be like, do you want to go to dinner? And I'm like, I don't um, <laughs> eat food. <laughs> I look like I eat food. Uh, so, um, but, like, he's a super nice guy, but it's like I can't date him because he doesn't live in a very good neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Jessica, Jessica, come back. <laughs> Jessica, come back. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> um... So, can people find me? <laughs> oh, um, I'm in the drinking debate, uh, whenever that is. Uh, <laughs> After response. Team Clams Casino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, drinking debate is at the Spokane Comedy Club. You can look that up. Did you know offhand, Harry, what that is? May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. Thank Come you. Come see us at the Spokane Comedy Club. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks so much, Jessica. Thank Great you. job. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Well, we're about to wrap it up here, but uh, my uh, there's there's little... two babies here. There's two babies. Uh, our IT guy Colin just told me that his his cousin just had a baby, and uh, his name's Enzo, and he's so cute. And this is her first night out. So, big round of applause for mom. <laughs> That's a really small baby. I can't and even. And that baby, that's my buddies, Chris and Melissa, and their baby's name is Orson. He's so cute. I love him. During Mama, Mama Doll, I was just getting these little chin tugs. And my baby, my baby Townsend, who co hosted the show with me once, uh, he turned seven yesterday, and he's really funny. <laughs> And I took him out of school on Tuesday, and we went to Wonderland in the movies. <laughs> and he had a warhead for the first time. It's really funny. <laughs> he was like, it's not, it's candy. I don't, it's not, I'm like, it's really sour. And he's like, I don't, no, it's no big deal. But. <laughs> no. Oh, you have the warhead for the first time. Okay, well, you're not worried about it at all. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Downey Bear. My sweet Downey, seven years old. And uh, Mama Doll, you all want to come on up again? Mama Doll's going to close out the show for us. Uh, oh, grab that mic again. Do we have names for the, these songs? <laughs> Not, well, a Not a good sign. Not a good sign. I kind of went with like a theme. Okay. You know, I get, like songs yeah. that don't have names. You just guys are winging it. It's like you're making up the songs on the uh, spot. <laughs> this song really doesn't have names. <laughs> Sorry. I really didn't think it through and I didn't anticipate the questions. And, um, so good luck finding it anywhere. <laughs> uh, can people find your music out there? Do no, you? we actually don't have a band name either. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can. You can find our music. Uh, Mama Doll spelled like M-A-M-A, -M -A, which I didn't anticipate all the variations that people right. smell, M -O -M -A. smell, spell Mama. Um, or we get a lot of like Mommy, which is, that's fine, but it's not the name. <laughs> so M-A-M-A -M -A and then space and then doll, you should not interpret that any other way. D-O-L-L. -L. Um, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Bandcamp. Oh, that's real <laughs> bottom of the barrel stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. Slam on band camp. Uh, <clears throat> do you have albums? Do you have shows coming up? Yeah, we've got a, we have an album. I have some in my tote. <laughs> if you want one, I'd love to have you buy one. Uh, and then we, our next full band show, we're playing Volume uh, on Woo. June 1st. Yeah, you should come. Uh, we'll be playing at Lucky You. Which yeah. is another reason to go. <laughs> For those who don't know, drummer Caleb and his wife Carly has opened a new venue called Lucky You that will be opening in May, right? Uh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right, play another nameless tune for us. Mama Doll, everybody, thanks for coming tonight. Doesn't look like 
anybody's home Time to sit it up song. <laughs> what song is it? Yeah. Yes. Woo! That's good. This song is about, um, I learned like a year ago, I was listening to the radio in my car and I learned that the moon is moving further away from the earth at about the rate of one inch per year. Did you know? Some of you are like, yeah, you idiot. Um, but I just found out a year ago, uh, and so I wrote this song about it because uh, you can't always write about yourself, you know? You gotta get out, get out there and write about the moon.
Can we do one more? I guess I should ask you guys. Are you about to get up and leave? <laughs> it's okay if you do. You gotta do what's best for you. This song has a name. It's called Wondrous. You can't find it, though, because we didn't record it. But, oh, you can find it on Vimeo. But you're also here living it right now. You're living this is, this is real life. Welcome. <laughs> We're doing it. Let's do it. Uh, who needs it? We gotta practice real quick. <laughs>
Thanks for coming to Light Like City Live. Give him a hand. See you.